Welcome. We have prepared for you 100 real estate questions that will help you study and prepare for your real estate exam. Please like this video and let's get started. Question 1. Which two documents are necessary to establish a legally binding mortgage loan? A. Promissory note and deed of trust. B. Sales contract and mortgage agreement. C. Title insurance and appraisal report. D. Warranty deed and lease agreement. The correct answer is A. Promissory note and deed of trust. The promissory note outlines the borrower's promise to repay the loan, while the deed of trust secures the property as collateral for the loan. Question 2. If a buyer defaults on a sales contract after providing $10,000 as earnest money for a $200,000 property, what can the seller do with the $10,000? A. Return the entire amount to the buyer. B. Keep the entire amount as compensation. C. Deduct any incurred expenses and return the remaining amount. D. Distribute the money among the real estate agents involved. The correct answer is B. Keep the entire amount as compensation. Earnest money serves as a form of security deposit and is typically forfeited by the buyer in the event of default as a way to compensate the seller for any losses or damages. Question 3. When there is an easement appurtenant between two separately owned parcels of land, what does it signify? A. The parcels have a shared driveway. B. One parcel has exclusive access to the other. C. Both parcels have equal rights to use a portion of each other's land. D. The parcels are jointly owned by multiple individuals. The correct answer is C. Both parcels have equal rights to use a portion of each other's land. An easement appurtenant grants one property the right to use a specific part of another property, usually for access or utility purposes, while both properties retain separate ownership. Question 4. What is the current maximum loan amount for a VA loan with no down payment in the United States? A. $484,350 B. $548,250 C. $625,500 D. There is no maximum loan amount. The correct answer is D. There is no maximum loan amount. VA loans do not have a maximum loan amount, but they do have limits on how much the VA will guarantee, which can vary by location. Additionally, lenders may have their own maximum loan amounts based on their underwriting standards. Question 5. In real estate, what is the closest meaning to the term quieting a title? A. Clearing any liens or encumbrances on a property. B. Transferring ownership from the seller to the buyer. C. Resolving disputes over property boundaries. D. Conducting a thorough property inspection. The correct answer is A. Clearing any liens or encumbrances on a property. Quieting a title refers to the legal process of resolving any claims, defects, or disputes that could cloud or challenge the ownership rights of a property, ensuring a clear and marketable title. Question 6. Which of the following is not a way by which an offer to purchase real estate would be terminated? A. Acceptance by the seller. B. Revocation by the buyer. C. Counteroffer by the seller. D. Rejection by the buyer. The correct answer is A. Acceptance by the seller. Acceptance by the seller indicates agreement and leads to the formation of a contract. The termination of an offer can occur through revocation, counteroffer, or rejection, but not acceptance. Question 7. If your broker sells a triangular parcel of land for 750 an acre and your commission rate is 8%, what will be your commission if the land has a base length of 1,200 feet and a height of 700 feet? A. $578.51 B. $1,680.20 C. $2,520.05 D. $3,360 the correct answer is A, $578.51. The triangular parcels area is one-half times base length times height equals one-half times 1,200 feet times 700 feet equals 420,000 square feet. There is 43,560 square feet in an acre. 420,000 divided by 43,560 equals 9.6418733 acres. 9.6418733 acres times 750 equals $7,231.
and 40 cents times 8 percent equals $578.51. Question 8. Tom is constructing a new house valued at $100,000. Given that the average property value of his surrounding neighbors is $225,000, which principle suggests that Tom will experience a positive effect on his property value? A. Principle of regression. B. Principle of progression. C. Principle of substitution. D. Principle of contribution. The correct answer is B. Principle of progression. The principle of progression states that a property's value tends to increase when surrounded by higher valued properties. Tom's property value may benefit from the higher average property values of his neighbors. Question 9. Bob Jones, who lacks a real estate license, hires Sally Salesperson to sell his property. During Sally's absence, Bob shows the property, provides price quotations, and accepts deposits. What are the implications of Bob's actions? A. Bob's actions are legal as long as Sally consents. B. Bob's actions are illegal and can lead to legal consequences. C. Bob's actions are permissible if he is a property owner. D. Bob's actions are acceptable as long as he doesn't sign any contracts. The correct answer is B. Bob's actions are illegal and can lead to legal consequences. Conducting real estate activities without a license is prohibited in most jurisdictions. Bob's actions, such as showing the property, quoting prices, and accepting deposits, violate licensing requirements and can result in legal consequences. Question 10. In which of the following situations does the buyer hold equitable title? A. After signing the purchase agreement but before closing. B. Upon making an offer to purchase the property. C. When the seller accepts the buyer's offer. D. Once the buyer obtains financing approval. The correct answer is A. After signing the purchase agreement but before closing. Equitable title refers to the buyer's interest in the property before obtaining legal title. It typically occurs after signing the purchase agreement, granting the buyer certain rights and responsibilities while the closing process is underway. Question 11. What is a true statement regarding the recording of a deed? A. Recording a deed establishes ownership rights. B. Recording a deed is optional. C. Recording a deed transfers mortgage responsibility. D. Recording a deed protects against property taxes. The correct answer is A. Recording a deed establishes ownership rights. Recording a deed in the appropriate government office establishes the legal proof of ownership and protects the property rights of the owner. Question 12. If you purchased a house for the listed price with a 20% discount and sold it for the listed price, what percentage of profit would you earn? A. 20%. B. 0%. C. 100%. D. 120%. The correct answer is C. 100%. If you bought the house for the listed price with a 20% discount and sold it for the listed price, your selling price would match the purchase price, resulting in a 100% profit. Question 13. Charlie leases space for a restaurant and installs fixtures such as counters, booths, and stoves. Who will own these fixtures? A. Charlie. B. Lesser. Property owner. C. Lessee. Renter. D. Government. The correct answer is C. Lessee. Renter. The stoves, counters, and booths can be removed by Charlie at any time before Charlie's lease expires. Question 14. In which type of loan does the lender set the interest rate? A. Fixed rate mortgage. B. Adjustable rate mortgage. C. Government-backed loan. D. Conventional loan. The correct answer is A. Fixed rate mortgage. In a fixed rate mortgage, the lender sets the interest rate at the beginning of the loan term, and it remains constant throughout the duration of the loan. Question 15. What does the term merchantable title or marketable title refer to? A. A title free from defects and legal encumbrances. B. A title with high market value. C. A title related to commercial properties. D. A title granted to merchants. The correct answer is A. A title free from defects and legal encumbrances. Merchantable title, or marketable title, refers to a property title that is considered clear and free from defects, liens, or other legal issues that could affect ownership rights or transferability. Question 16. What is the typical commission rate charged by real estate agents in the United States? A. 3%, B. 4%, C. 5%, D. 
D. 6%. The correct answer is A. 3%. The typical commission rate charged by real estate agents in the United States is around 3%. However, this can vary widely depending on location, the services provided by the agent, and other factors. It is important for sellers to negotiate the commission rate with their agent before signing a listing agreement. Question 17. If a landlord receives rent at the start of the month and sells the property 10 days later, how should the rent be prorated at settlement? A. No proration is needed. B. The entire month's rent is credited to the seller. C. The entire month's rent is credited to the buyer. D. The rent is divided based on the number of days owned by the seller and the buyer. The correct answer is D. The rent is divided based on the number of days owned by the seller and the buyer. To ensure a fair settlement, the rent should be prorated, dividing it based on the number of days the seller and buyer each own the property. Question 18. Which statement indicates that any verbal discussions made prior to a written contract are invalidated and cannot be considered? A. Statute of Frauds. B. Parole Evidence Rule. C. Doctrine of Latches. D. Recession. The correct answer is B. Parole Evidence Rule. The Parole Evidence Rule states that any verbal agreements or discussions made prior to a written contract are invalidated and cannot be considered in the contract's interpretation. Question 19. Which of the following formulas is used to determine value through the income approach in real estate? A. Value equals land cost plus construction cost. B. Value equals market demand plus supply. C. Value equals gross rent multiplier times monthly rent. D. Value equals appraised price minus closing costs. The correct answer is C. Value equals gross rent multiplier times monthly rent. The income approach calculates value by multiplying the gross rent multiplier, GRM, with the monthly rent, providing an estimation of the property's worth based on its income potential. Question 20. How is effective gross income defined in the income approach to property valuation? A. Total rental income minus vacancies and collection losses. B. Total operating expenses minus debt service. C. Total rental income plus operating expenses. D. Total rental income minus operating expenses. The correct answer is A. Total rental income minus vacancies and collection losses. Effective gross income in the income approach refers to the total rental income generated by the property minus any vacancies and collection losses. It represents the income stream available for property valuation. Question 21. If the number 12 on a clock were positioned facing north, what would be the description of N60 degree? A. 12 o'clock. B. 9 o'clock. C. 10 o'clock. D. 3 o'clock. The correct answer is D. 3 o'clock. N60 degree W represents a direction 60 degrees westward from north on a compass, which corresponds to the position of 3 o'clock on a clock face. Question 22. At what point does legal title to real property transfer from the seller to the buyer? A. Offer acceptance. B. Purchase agreement signing. C. Closing or settlement. D. Earnest money deposit. The correct answer is C. Closing or settlement. Legal title to real property typically transfers from the seller to the buyer at the closing or settlement, where all necessary documents are signed, funds are exchanged, and ownership is officially transferred. Question 23. A corner lot measures 60 by 90. If you plan to install a sidewalk seven wide beyond the lot lines on both frontage streets, how many square feet of sidewalk will be installed? A. 1,260 square feet. B. 1,080 square feet. C. 2,520 square feet. D. 1,800 square feet. The correct answer is B. 1,080 square feet. To calculate the sidewalk area, we subtract the dimensions of the original lot, 60 by 90, from the extended lot, 74 by 104. The difference is 14 by 14 equals 196 square feet on each frontage street, totaling 392 square feet. Since there are two streets, the total sidewalk area is 392 square feet, times 2 equals 784 square feet. Question 24. Tom and Jerry enter into a contract where Tom agrees to build a house and sell it to Jerry in 120 days. 
Jerry agrees to pay Tom's price within 60 days of completion. What type of contract is this before the house is completed? A. Option contract. B. Installment contract. C. Construction contract. D. Executory contract. The correct answer is D. Executory contract. This is an executory contract because both parties have yet to fulfill their obligations. The contract is binding, but the actions agreed upon are pending completion. Question 25. Mr. Brown grants his neighbor, Mr. White, a written servitude to cross his property, which is properly recorded. Later, Mr. Brown sells the property to Mr. Green without disclosing the existence of the servitude. What happens to this servitude? A. The servitude remains valid and continues to be enforceable against Mr. Green. B. The servitude is automatically terminated upon the sale of the property. C. Mr. White must request a new servitude from Mr. Green. D. The servitude becomes void and unenforceable against Mr. Green. The correct answer is A. The servitude remains valid and continues to be enforceable against Mr. Green. The servitude, being properly recorded, is binding on subsequent property owners, including Mr. Green, who must respect and honor the granted right of way. Question 26. Mike and Ike orally agree to a two-year lease. If Ike breaches the agreement, can Mike bring a court action to enforce the lease? Explain why or why not. A. Yes, because an oral lease is legally binding. B. Yes, because Ike's breach violates the lease agreement. C. No, because oral leases are unenforceable. D. No, because written documentation is required for a valid lease. The correct answer is C. No, because oral leases are unenforceable. In most jurisdictions, oral leases exceeding a certain duration, for example one year, are unenforceable. Leases generally require written documentation to be legally binding. Question 27. What is another term for a due-on-sale clause in a real estate contract? A. Acceleration clause. B. Contingency clause. C. Escalation clause. D. Rescission clause. The correct answer is A. Acceleration clause. A due-on-sale clause in a real estate contract is also known as an acceleration clause, which allows the lender to demand full payment if the property is sold or transferred. Question 28. On a 90. By 90 lot with building setbacks of 30, from the front, 10 from the sides, and 20 from the rear, what is the net building area in square feet? A. 2,800 square feet. B. 4,500 square feet. C. 5,400 square feet. D. 6,210 square feet. The correct answer is A. 2,800 square feet. To calculate the net building area, subtract the setbacks from the lot dimensions, 90 minus 30 minus 20, times 90 minus 2 times 10, equals 40 times 70 equals 2,800 square feet per floor. Question 29. Which statement accurately describes a real estate mortgage? A. It conveys ownership of the property to the lender. B. It is a security instrument that pledges the property as collateral for a loan. C. It grants the borrower exclusive possession rights to the property. D. It automatically terminates upon loan repayment. The correct answer is B. It is a security instrument that pledges the property as collateral for a loan. A real estate mortgage serves as a security instrument where the borrower pledges the property as collateral to secure a loan, providing the lender with the right to foreclose if the loan is not repaid. Question 30. How are the numbers typically assigned on a range? A. From highest to lowest. B. From north to south. C. From west to east. D. From lowest to highest. The correct answer is C. From west to east. Numbers on a range, typically used for rural addresses, are assigned in ascending order from west to east along a road or street. Question 31. How do you determine the property taxes for a property? A. Multiply the assessed value by the tax rate. B. Subtract the tax exemptions from the assessed value. C. Divide the market value by the millage rate. D. Add the appraised value and the assessed value. The correct answer is A. Multiply the assessed value by the tax rate. Property taxes are typically calculated by multiplying the assessed value of the property by the tax rate set by the local government. Question 32. A lot with dimensions of 85 feet times 190 feet and 55 feet 9 inches times 120 feet has sold at 2 per square foot. 
What is the broker's commission at an 8% rate? A. $3,654.40 B. $8,208 C. $9,680.60 D. $11,528 The correct answer is A. $3,654.40 Calculate the total area of the lot by adding the areas of the two sections 85 feet times 190 feet plus 55 feet 9 inches times 120 feet equals 22,840 square feet. 22,840 times 2 equals $45,680 sale price. Take the sales price times commission equals $3,654.40. Question 33. In which type of financing can negative amortization occur? A. Fixed rate mortgage. B. Adjustable rate mortgage. C. Conventional mortgage. D. FHA loan. The correct answer is B. Adjustable rate mortgage. Negative amortization can occur in an adjustable rate mortgage when the monthly payment is insufficient to cover the interest, resulting in the unpaid interest being added to the loan balance. Question 34. What is the primary characteristic of a variable rate mortgage? A. Fixed interest rate throughout the loan term. B. Ability to make extra principal payments. C. Monthly payment remains constant. D. Interest rate fluctuates based on market conditions. The correct answer is D. Interest rate fluctuates based on market conditions. The primary characteristic of a variable rate mortgage is that the interest rate adjusts periodically, typically based on an index such as the prime rate or treasury bill rate. Question 35. What is the term for the right of a water company to lay and maintain water mains along the rear of a lot? A. Water easement. B. Water servitude. C. Water lien. D. Water encroachment. The correct answer is A. Water easement. The right of a water company to lay and maintain water mains along the rear of a lot is commonly referred to as a water easement, granting the company access to the property for water supply infrastructure. Question 36. What does the covenant of season entail? A. Guarantee of clear title. B. Right to possess the property. C. Obligation to pay property taxes. D. Maintenance of the property's physical condition. The correct answer is A. Guarantee of clear title. The covenant of season ensures that the grantor of a property has the legal right to transfer ownership and guarantees that the property's title is free from any defects or claims. Question 37. If a right is not asserted within a reasonable time frame, what consequence might a court determine? A. Estoppel. B. Lien. C. Adverse possession. D. Abandonment. The correct answer is D. Abandonment. Failing to assert a right within a reasonable period of time can lead a court to determine that the right has been abandoned or waived by the party, thereby losing the ability to assert it. Question 38. A landlord selling his property collected June rent from five tenants, two at $345 and three at $425. What is the total rent collected? A. $1,965. B. $2,145. C. $2,135. D. $2,115. The correct answer is A. $1,965. Add the rent collected from each tenant, 2 times $345, plus 3 times $425, equals $1,965. Question 39. Which of the following is not a function of FNMA, Fannie Mae? A. Purchasing mortgage loans. B. Securitizing mortgages. C. Providing mortgage insurance. D. Regulating mortgage interest rates. The correct answer is D. Regulating mortgage interest rates. FNMA's functions include purchasing mortgage loans, securitizing mortgages, and providing mortgage insurance. But it does not regulate mortgage interest rates, which are set by market forces. Question 40. Which of the following represents a type of estate that is not freehold? A. A fee simple estate. B. A leasehold estate. C. A life estate. D. A remainder estate. Correct answer. B. A leasehold estate. A leasehold estate is a type of property ownership where a person holds the right to use and occupy the property for a specified period through a lease agreement, but they do not own the underlying land. 
It is a form of less than freehold estate because it is not a permanent ownership interest like a fee simple estate. Question 41. In what capacity can a broker execute a contract on behalf of their principal? A. Agent. B. Employee. C. Independent contractor. D. Subordinate. The correct answer is A. Agent. A broker acts as an agent when executing a contract on behalf of their principal, representing the principal's interests and acting within the scope of their authority. Question 42. What does it indicate when a borrower makes monthly loan payments of $612 on an amortized loan? A. Interest-only loan. B. Negative amortization. C. Fully amortized loan. D. Balloon payment loan. The correct answer is C. Fully amortized loan. Monthly loan payments of $612 on an amortized loan indicate that the borrower is paying both principal and interest over the loan term, leading to full repayment by the end. Question 43. Which of the following is not a characteristic of an independent contractor relationship with a broker? A. Employee benefits provided. B. Flexible work schedule. C. Payment on a commission basis. D. Control over work methods. The correct answer is A. Employee benefits provided. Independent contractors typically do not receive employee benefits provided by the broker. They have more autonomy and are compensated based on commissions earned. Question 44. If the monthly payment on a mortgage loan is $1,412 and the interest rate is 11.5%, what is the principal sum? A. $147,399.13. B. $160,020.65. C. $180,000.50. D. $210,000.23. The correct answer is A. $147,399.13. The principal sum can be calculated by dividing the yearly payment by the interest rate. First find the yearly payment, $1,412 times 12, equals 16,944 divided by 0 0.115 equals $147,399.13. Question 45. What type of covenants are typically included in general warranty deeds? A. Covenant of season, quiet enjoyment and further assurance. B. Covenant of redemption, encumbrance and merger. C. Covenant of acceleration, estoppel and subordination. D. Covenant of warranty, breach and disclaimer. The correct answer is A. Covenant of season, quiet enjoyment and further assurance. General warranty deeds commonly include covenants of sizin, ownership, quiet enjoyment, freedom from interference, and further assurance, protection against defects. Question 46 A, B, and C are joint tenants. C sells their share to B, who then passes away. What percentage of B's interest in the property transfers to A? A, 33%, B, 50%, C, 66%, D, 100%. The correct answer is C. 66%. In a joint tenancy, when one tenant dies, the surviving tenants divide the deceased tenant's interest equally. Since there were originally three joint tenants, A would receive two-thirds 66% of B's interest. Question 47. Which statement applies to all appurtenances in real estate? A. They are always personal property. B. They can be transferred separately from the property. C. They are always fixtures. D. They have no legal significance. The correct answer is B. They can be transferred separately from the property. Appurtenances are rights or privileges associated with a property that can be transferred separately, such as easements or air rights, regardless of whether they are considered personal property or fixtures. Question 48. What are the practical essentials required for a valid contract in real estate? A. Offer and acceptance, consideration, and legal purpose. B. Written form, notarization, and witnesses. C. Clear title, property survey, and inspections. D. Buyer's pre-approval, seller's disclosure, and appraisal. The correct answer is A. Offer and acceptance, consideration, and legal purpose. To form a valid contract in real estate, there must be a clear offer and acceptance, consideration exchanged, typically money, and the contract must serve a legal purpose. Question 49. Which statement is true regarding real estate sales contracts? A. 
They are binding only if written on a specific form. B. Oral agreements are sufficient to create enforceable contracts. C. They must be signed by both parties to be valid. D. Verbal offers are legally binding and can be accepted. The correct answer is C. They must be signed by both parties to be valid. Real estate sales contracts require the signatures of both the buyer and seller to be considered valid and enforceable, providing clear evidence of mutual consent and agreement. Question 50. In Sunnyvale subdivision, consisting of 75 acres, 400 houses were built on 7,500 square feet lots. If each house averaged 50 times 40 feet, what percentage of the subdivision is covered by the houses? A. 4%. B. 10%. C. 25%. D. 50%. The correct answer is C. 25%. Each house occupies 2,000 square feet, 50 times 40 feet, and a total of 400 houses were built on 7,500 square feet lots, 2,000 times 400, equals 800,000 square feet of houses. There are 43,560 square feet in an acre, 75 times 43,560, equals 3,267,000 total square feet, 800,000 divided by 3,267,000 equals 0.2448 roundup, and make a percentage equals 25%. Question 51. Which of the following is not a form of evidence of title? A. Title insurance policy. B. Warranty deed. C. Chain of title. D. Property survey. The correct answer is D. Property survey. While a property survey is important in real estate transactions, it is not considered a direct form of evidence of title. Title insurance policy, warranty deed, and chain of title provide evidence of ownership. Question 52. The three-day right of rescission, as per Regulation Z, applies to which situation? A. Commercial real estate transactions. B. Refinancing a mortgage. C. Purchase of a primary residence. D sale of a rental property. The correct answer is B. Refinancing a mortgage. The three-day right of rescission under Regulation Z gives borrowers the right to cancel a mortgage refinance transaction within three business days of closing. Question 53. The broker of ABC Realty secured a six-month exclusive right to sell listing from Mini, but failed to market the property for 60 days. Which statement is false? A. The broker may be in breach of the listing agreement. B. Mini can terminate the listing agreement due to the broker's inaction. C. The broker is still entitled to collect the commission upon sale. D. The broker's failure to market the property is permissible under the listing agreement. The correct answer is D. The broker's failure to market the property is permissible under the listing agreement. The broker's failure to market the property for 60 days may be a breach of the listing agreement and many may have grounds to terminate the agreement or seek legal recourse. Question 54. In a township, what does Section 11 represent? A. A unit of land measuring one square mile. B. The designated commercial area. C. The public park or recreational area. D. The local government administrative division. The correct answer is A. A unit of land measuring one square mile. In a township, Section 11 represents a unit of land measuring one square mile, typically used for administrative and surveying purposes. Question 55. If an appraiser calculates the total land value and then adds the value of the improvements, this method is referred to as what? A. Cost approach. B. Market approach. C. Income approach. D. Sales comparison approach. The correct answer is A. Cost approach. The cost approach in real estate appraisal involves estimating the value of land and adding the value of improvements based on the cost of construction or replacement. Question 56. A fiduciary relationship exists between the listing broker and the seller. The fiduciary ends, however, if the seller does which of the following? A. Rejects an offer from a potential buyer. B. Hires an attorney for legal advice. C. Withdraws the property from the market. D provides financial disclosures to the buyer. The correct answer is C. Withdraws the property from the market. The fiduciary relationship between the listing broker and the seller typically ends if the seller decides to withdraw the property from the market, terminating the broker's authority. Question 57. 
a real estate company listed a piece of property at 4.50 per square foot. The lot was 50 feet x 137 feet. The commission was 7.25%. What amount would the seller pay the real estate company? A. $2,234.81 B. $9,545.25 C. $10,452.88 D. $16,762.14 The correct answer is A. $2,234.81 The total price of the lot is calculated as 50 feet times 137 feet equals 6,850 times 4.50 equals 30,825. Then take that and multiply it by 0 .0725 equals $2,234.81. Question 58. All of the following are defined and protected under familial status according to the 1988 Amendment of the Federal Fair Housing Law of 1968. Except for which one? A. Families with children under 18. B. Pregnant women. C. Individuals with disabilities. D. Married couples without children. The correct answer is D. Married couples without children. The Federal Fair Housing Law of 1968, amended in 1988, protects familial status, which includes families with children, pregnant women, and individuals with disabilities, but it does not specifically protect married couples without children. Question 59. What does the term escite mean in the context of real estate? A. The transfer of property ownership through inheritance. B. The process of a property being taken over by a government entity. C. The negotiation and execution of a real estate contract. D. The appraisal of a property's market value. The correct answer is B. The process of a property being taken over by a government entity. Escheat refers to the transfer of property ownership to a government entity when an individual dies without leaving a will or legal heirs. Question 60. If the market value of real estate is $72,000 and the property is assessed at 67% of value, what would be the monthly taxes if the tax rate for the area is 6.50 per 100 of assessed value? A. $261.30 B. $312 C. C. $389.76. D. $420.48. The correct answer is A. $261.30. The assessed value is calculated as $72,000 times 67% equals $48,240. Then to find the monthly taxes, you take $48,240. Now to find the tax rate, you take $48,240. Divided by 100 equals $482.40 times 6.50 equals $3,135.60 for the entire year. Now to find monthly take $3,135.50 divided by 12 equals $261.30. Question 61. Betty Smith took title to property in the name Elizabeth Smith. When she sold the property, she signed Betty Smith as grantor. The buyer has which of the following? A. A valid claim to the property. B. No legal recourse. C. Uncertain ownership rights. D. The right to challenge the transaction. The correct answer is C. Uncertain ownership rights. The inconsistency in the name used by the seller creates ambiguity regarding the ownership rights of the buyer, leading to uncertainty and potential legal complications. Question 62. All of the following are involved in the secondary mortgage market except for which one? A. Mortgage lenders. B. Mortgage brokers. C. Government-sponsored enterprises. D. Home buyers. The correct answer is D. Home buyers. The secondary mortgage market involves various entities like mortgage lenders, mortgage brokers, and government-sponsored enterprises, such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but home buyers are not directly involved in this market. Question 63. What is the method of creating an agency relationship in which the principal accepts the conduct of someone who acted without prior authorization as the principal's agent? A. Implied agency. B. Ostensible agency. C. Express agency. D. Ratified agency. The correct answer is D. Ratified agency. 
Ratified agency occurs when the principal accepts or confirms the actions of someone who acted as their agent without prior authorization, thereby creating an agency relationship. Question 64. A buyer wishes to give a post-dated check with an offer. What should the broker do? A. Accept the post-dated check. B. Inform the buyer that post-dated checks are not accepted. C. Advise the buyer to provide a certified check instead. D. Consult with the seller before deciding. The correct answer is C. Advise the buyer to provide a certified check instead. Post-dated checks may create uncertainty and complications in the transaction. It is advisable for the broker to recommend a certified check, which provides immediate funds and security. Question 65. What is the cost of constructing a fence 6 feet and 6 inches high around a lot, measuring 90 feet x 175 feet? Given that the cost of building the fence is 1.25 per linear foot and the material is 0.825 per square foot. A. $3,504.63. B. $5,243.75. C. $7,762.50. D. $9,076.25. The correct answer is A. $3,504.63. P equals 2 times 90 plus 175 equals 530 feet. So the erection cost is 530 feet times 1.25 feet equals 662.50. A equals 2, 90 plus 175 times 6.5 equals 3,445 feet squared. So the cost of materials is 3,445 feet squared times 0.825 feet squared equals $2,842.13. Total cost is $2,842.13 plus $662.50 equals $3,504.63. Question 66. Which statement below is incorrect concerning property management? A. Property managers are responsible for setting rental prices. B. Property managers handle maintenance and repairs. C. Property managers oversee tenant screening and selection. D. Property managers do not have a role in lease agreements. The correct answer is D. Property managers do not have a role in lease agreements. Property managers play a crucial role in lease agreements, including drafting, negotiating, and enforcing lease terms on behalf of property owners. Question 67. What percentage of Americans own their homes outright? that is, without a mortgage, A, 10%, B, 20%, C, 30%, D, 40%. The correct answer is D, 40%. About 40% of American homeowners own their homes outright, without a mortgage. This can provide financial security and freedom from monthly mortgage payments. Question 68. What is the average length of time homeowners stay in their homes in the United States? A, 5 to 7 years. B. 7 to 10 years. C. 10 to 15 years. D. 15 to 20 years. The correct answer is C. 10 to 15 years. The average length of time homeowners stay in their homes in the United States is between 10 to 15 years. This can vary based on factors such as personal circumstances, job changes, and the local housing market. In a transaction where a single agent represents both parties, what happens? A. The agent acts as a dual agent. B. The agent becomes a transaction coordinator. C. Another agent is assigned to one of the parties. D. The transaction is prohibited by law. The correct answer is A. The agent acts as a dual agent. When a single agent represents both the buyer and seller in a transaction, they assume the role of a dual agent, facilitating the transaction impartially while representing both parties' interests. Question 70. Which statement below is true concerning mutual recognition? A. It allows real estate professionals to practice without a license in different states. B. It only applies to certain types of real estate transactions. C. It simplifies the process of obtaining a real estate license in multiple states. D. It restricts real estate professionals from working outside their home state. The correct answer is C. It simplifies the process of obtaining a real estate license in multiple states.
Mutual recognition agreements between states allow real estate professionals to obtain licenses in multiple states more easily, reducing the burden of duplicative licensing requirements. Question 71. The seller has chosen to list his house with ABC Brokerage and is organizing a lottery where participants purchase $1,000 tickets. The winner drawn at the end of the month will become the new owner of the home. Which statement below applies? A. Participants purchase tickets and the winner becomes the new owner. B. Participants enter the lottery for free and the winner becomes the new owner. C. Participants purchase tickets and the winner receives a cash prize. D. Participants purchase tickets and the winner gets a discount on the house. The correct answer is A. Participants purchase tickets and the winner becomes the new owner. In this scenario, participants buy tickets for the lottery and the person whose ticket is drawn becomes the new owner of the house. Question 72. Which of the following statements is true regarding registration with the Department of Business and Professional Regulations? A. Registration is optional for real estate professionals. B. Registration is required for real estate professionals. C. Registration is required for buyers but not sellers. D. Registration is required for sellers but not buyers. The correct answer is B. Registration is required for real estate professionals. Real estate professionals are generally required to register with the Department of Business and Professional Regulations to ensure compliance with regulations and industry standards. Question 73. Sabrina and Logan have formed a partnership for real estate transactions, each investing a 50% interest and agreeing to split the profits equally. Which statement below is true about their arrangement? A. They will only split profits if the partnership incurs losses. B. They will split profits based on the percentage of investment. C. They will split profits based on the amount of time invested. D. They will split profits equally, regardless of their investment percentages. The correct answer is D. They will split profits equally, regardless of their investment percentages. Sabrina and Logan have agreed to divide the profits equally, regardless of the specific percentage of their individual investments in the partnership. Question 74. Which of the following home styles is the most popular among home buyers in the United States? A. Ranch style. B. Contemporary. C. Colonial. D. Victorian. The correct answer is A. Ranch style. Ranch style homes are the most popular among home buyers in the United States, accounting for about 42% of homes sold. Ranch style homes are typically single story homes with an open floor plan and a low pitched roof. Question 75 Sales Associate Jimmy, a top producer at Highland Homes, has been asked by the owner to work at a new Highland Homes location in addition to his current location. What is true about Jimmy's situation? A. Jimmy will be exclusively assigned to the new location. B. Jimmy will continue working only at his current location. C. Jimmy will split his time between the new location and his current location. D. Jimmy will transition to working solely at the new location. The correct answer is C. Jimmy will split his time between the new location and his current location. The owner has requested Jimmy to work at the new location while also maintaining his responsibilities at his current location, resulting in a shared workload between the two places. Question 76 Among Real Estate Relationship Disclosure Forms, which is the only form that requires a signature or initials? A. Buyer's Disclosure Form B. Seller's Disclosure Form C. Dual Agency Disclosure Form D. Transaction Broker Notice The correct answer is C. Dual Agency Disclosure Form the dual agency disclosure form is the only form among real estate relationship disclosure forms that typically requires the signature or initials of the parties involved to acknowledge their understanding of dual agency representation. Question 77. Which statement below is true concerning agency in real estate? A. An agent can represent both the buyer and the seller in the same transaction without any conflict of interest. B. Agency relationships can only be established through written agreements. C. Agents are always required to disclose their agency relationships to all parties involved in a real estate transaction. D. The type of agency relationship is determined solely by the agent without the consent of the client. The correct answer is C. 
Agents are always required to disclose their agency relationships to all parties involved in a real estate transaction. Real estate agents have a legal obligation to disclose their agency relationships to all parties involved in a transaction to ensure transparency and avoid any potential conflicts of interest. Question 78. Buyer Bill has established a single agent relationship with broker Sarah, who also represents seller Thomas as a single agent. Sarah believes a property listed by Thomas would be ideal for Bill. In what capacity can Sarah work with both the buyer and the seller? A. Dual agent. B. Transaction broker. C. Designated agent. D. Facilitator. The correct answer is A. Dual agent. In this scenario, Sarah would act as a dual agent, representing both the buyer, Bill, and the seller, Thomas, with their informed consent and following applicable legal requirements. Question 79. Which of the following real estate investment strategies involves buying a property with the intention of renovating and reselling it quickly for a profit? A. Buy and hold. B. Flip. C. Brewer. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. D. REIT. Real Estate Investment Trust. The correct answer is B. Flip. The strategy of buying a property with the intention of renovating and reselling it quickly for a profit is commonly referred to as flipping. This is different from the buy and hold strategy, which involves purchasing a property with the intention of holding onto it as a long term investment, or the BRRER strategy, which involves buying, renovating, renting out, refinancing, and repeating the process. REITs, on the other hand, involve pooling investor funds to purchase and manage a portfolio of income-generating real estate properties. Question 80. Which of the following actions would terminate a single agency relationship with the principal who hired a broker to list his house? A. The principal temporarily suspends the listing agreement. B. The broker assigns another agent to handle the listing. C. The principal decides to withdraw the property from the market. D. The broker finds a potential buyer for the property. The correct answer is C. The principal decides to withdraw the property from the market. If the principal decides to withdraw the property from the market, it would typically terminate the single agency relationship established with the broker for listing the house. Question 81. Which of the following statements accurately describes agency? A. Agency refers to the legal relationship between a real estate agent and their client. B. Agency only exists when a real estate agent represents the seller. C. Agency is a term used exclusively for commercial real estate transactions. D. Agency is not relevant in real estate dealings. The correct answer is A. Agency refers to the legal relationship between a real estate agent and their client. Agency is a fundamental concept in real estate, encompassing the relationship between an agent and their client, whether representing the buyer or seller. Question 82. Which of the following statements is false regarding brokerage offices? A. Brokerage offices serve as a central location for real estate agents to conduct business. B. Brokerage offices are typically owned and operated by licensed brokers. C. Brokerage offices are not involved in the process of property transactions. D. Brokerage offices provide administrative support and resources to their affiliated agents. The correct answer is C. Brokerage offices are not involved in the process of property transactions. Brokerage offices play a crucial role in facilitating property transactions, providing support, resources, and a physical space for agents to conduct their business. Question 83. Which of the following advertisements would be considered a blind ad? A. Charming beachfront property with breathtaking views. Contact for details. B. Spacious three-bedroom home in a family-friendly neighborhood. Call to schedule a viewing. C. Luxury penthouse available in prestigious downtown tower. Inquire for more information. D. Affordable fixer-upper with great investment potential. Contact for address and showing. The correct answer is D. Affordable fixer-upper with great investment potential. Contact for address and showing. A blind ad withholds specific property details, such as the address, requiring interested parties to inquire further for additional information. Question 84. In Janice's situation, what can be inferred based on her concern about her name not being included on the brokerage sign? A. Janice is dissatisfied with the overall working environment at the brokerage. B. 
Janice believes her name on the sign would positively impact her professional image. C. Janice is concerned about the legality of not having her name displayed. D. Janice wants her name on the sign as a symbol of seniority and recognition. The correct answer is B. Janice believes her name on the sign would positively impact her professional image. Janice's concern about her name not being on the brokerage sign suggests that she values the visibility and recognition it brings, which can enhance her professional reputation. Question 85. Broker Willie, aware that 4520 Central Street in St. Petersburg was recently rented through a competing brokerage, decides to advertise the property for rent. What best describes Willie's action? A. Willie is engaging in an unethical business practice by advertising a property that is not available for rent. B. Willie is trying to attract potential renters and buyers to his brokerage by advertising a recently rented property. C. Willie is helping the competing brokerage by promoting their recently rented property to a wider audience. D. Willie is attempting to find new leads by advertising a property that he believes will become available for rent again soon. The correct answer is B. Willie is trying to attract potential renters and buyers to his brokerage by advertising a recently rented property. Willie sees the recently rented property as an opportunity to generate leads and interest from potential clients by advertising it for rent, even though it is not currently available. Question 86. Toya, a sales associate, plans to sell her house to capitalize on her real estate expertise. What accurately describes Toya's situation? A. Toya can expect to sell her house quickly due to her industry knowledge. B. Toya's real estate expertise will not have an impact on the sale of her house. C. Toya's professional background may enable her to maximize profit from selling her house. D. Toya's real estate expertise will make it difficult for her to find a buyer for her house. The correct answer is C. Toya's professional background may enable her to maximize profit from selling her house. Toya's knowledge and experience in real estate can provide her with an advantage in effectively marketing and negotiating the sale of her own property. Question 87. When an escrow deposit is placed with a title company or attorney, what procedures must be followed? A. The escrow deposit must be immediately released to the seller. B. The escrow deposit is held until the closing date then dispersed according to the terms of the contract. C. The escrow deposit is refunded to the buyer if the seller fails to meet certain conditions. D. The escrow deposit is used to pay the real estate agent's commission. The correct answer is B. The escrow deposit is held until the closing date, then dispersed according to the terms of the contract. When an escrow deposit is made, it is typically held by the title company or attorney until the closing of the transaction, at which point it is dispersed according to the agreed-upon terms. Question 88. In a scenario where a buyer defaults a week before executing a signed contract and the seller believes they're entitled to the earnest money, what should the broker do if unsure about the rightful recipient? A. Distribute the earnest money to the seller to avoid potential legal complications. B. Hold the earnest money until a court order or mutual agreement determines the rightful recipient. C. Return the earnest money to the buyer as a gesture of goodwill. D. Keep the earnest money as a fee for the broker's involvement in the transaction. The correct answer is B. Hold the earnest money until a court order or mutual agreement determines the rightful recipient. When there is uncertainty about the rightful recipient of the earnest money, it is advisable for the broker to hold the funds until a court order or mutual agreement clarifies the appropriate distribution. Question 89. Which of the following real estate investment strategies involves pooling money from multiple investors to purchase properties? A. REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. B. Syndication. C. Crowdfunding. D. Private Equity Real Estate. The correct answer is B. Syndication. Real estate syndication involves pooling money from multiple investors to purchase properties, typically with the intention of generating rental income or selling the properties for a profit. REITs, crowdfunding, and private equity real estate are other real estate investment strategies that involve pooling investor funds, but each has its own unique characteristics and structure. Question 90. Broker Paula listed a property with an exclusive right to sell agreement, 
stating a 6% commission. The property sold quickly, and the seller now demands a reduction to 3% commission. What applies in this situation? A. Paula must reduce the commission to satisfy the seller's demand. B. Paula should negotiate with the seller to find a mutually agreeable resolution. C. Paula is entitled to the full 6% commission as per the signed agreement. D. Paula must refund the commission already received to the seller. The correct answer is C. Paula is entitled to the full 6% commission as per the signed agreement. The seller's post-sale demand does not alter the terms of the exclusive right to sell agreement, and therefore Paula is entitled to the full commission agreed upon in the contract. Question 91. What is the typical length of a lease for a commercial property in the United States? A. 1 to 3 years. B. 3 to 5 years. C. 5 to 7 years. D. 7 to 10 years. The correct answer is B. 3 to 5 years. The typical length of a lease for a commercial property in the United States is usually three to five years. This allows for a balance between providing the tenant with enough stability and the landlord with enough flexibility in case of market changes or tenant turnover. However, leases can vary in length depending on the agreement between the parties. Question 92. Which statement is false regarding the payment of an unearned fee or kickback? A. Payment of an unearned fee or kickback can be a violation of real estate laws and regulations. B. Accepting kickbacks is permissible as long as they are disclosed to all parties involved. C. Real estate professionals should avoid receiving unearned fees or kickbacks to maintain ethical practices. D. Unearned fees or kickbacks can create conflicts of interest and compromise the integrity of the transaction. The correct answer is B. Accepting kickbacks is permissible as long as they are disclosed to all parties involved. Accepting kickbacks, even with disclosure, is generally considered unethical and can be a violation of real estate laws and regulations. Question 93. Which statement concerning partnerships is incorrect? A. In a general partnership, all partners share equal responsibility and liability for the business. B. Limited partnerships have both general partners and limited partners with different levels of responsibility and liability. C. Partnerships require a formal written agreement outlining the roles, responsibilities, and profit-sharing arrangements. D. Partnerships provide limited liability protection to all partners involved. The correct answer is D. Partnerships provide limited liability protection to all partners involved. Partnerships do not provide limited liability protection to all partners. In a general partnership, all partners have unlimited personal liability for the partnership's debts and obligations. Question 94. If an unlicensed individual is found guilty of acting like a broker and collecting commissions, what penalty could be imposed? A. Fines and monetary penalties. B. License suspension or revocation. C. Imprisonment or jail time. D. Community service or probation. The correct answer is A fines and monetary penalties. Unlicensed individuals acting as brokers and collecting commissions can face penalties in the form of fines and monetary sanctions as a consequence of their unlawful activities. Question 95. When a claim against a licensee is filed and the real estate recovery fund is used to compensate, what applies? A. The licensee's professional reputation remains intact and they are not subject to any disciplinary actions. B. The licensee must personally reimburse the real estate recovery fund for the amount paid out. C. The licensee's license may be suspended or revoked, and they may face disciplinary actions. D. The real estate recovery fund is not available to compensate claimants in cases involving licensees. The correct answer is C. The licensee's license may be suspended or revoked, and they may face disciplinary actions. If a claim against a licensee is paid from the real estate recovery fund, it indicates misconduct, which can lead to license suspension or revocation, as well as potential disciplinary actions against the licensee. Question 96. Stacy recently moved out of her rented property and was told by the landlord that she would receive her security deposit within 15 days. What statement is true regarding Stacy's security deposit? A. The landlord is legally required to return the security deposit within the specified time frame. B. The landlord can withhold the security deposit indefinitely. C. 
Stacy is not entitled to receive her security deposit back. D. The landlord can use the security deposit for any purpose they choose. The correct answer is A. The landlord is legally required to return the security deposit within the specified time frame. Landlords are generally obligated by law to return the security deposit to tenants within a specific period, typically outlined in local rental regulations. Question 97. The Federal Fair Housing Act, also known as the Civil Rights Act of 1968, prohibits discrimination in the showing, negotiation, sale, rental, or financing of a dwelling based on what? A. Age. B. Gender. C. Income level. D. Race. The correct answer is D. Race. The Federal Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in housing transactions based on race, along with other protected classes such as color, religion, national origin, familial status, and disability. Question 98 Tally, a sales associate at Madeira Brokerage Firm, is instructed by her broker to exclusively show Asian-speaking prospects a new subdivision called Orient on the Express. What is this an example of? A. Redlining. B. Blockbusting. C. Steering. D. Zoning. The correct answer is C. Steering. This scenario represents steering, which involves guiding or directing individuals toward or away from certain neighborhoods or properties based on their race, ethnicity, or other protected characteristics. Question 99. In 1988, Congress amended the Fair Housing Act of 1968 to include two additional protected classes. Which two classes were added? A. Age and marital status. B. Gender and sexual orientation. C. Disability and familial status. D national origin and religion? The correct answer is C. Disability and familial status. The Fair Housing Act was amended in 1988 to include disability and familial status as protected classes, prohibiting discrimination against individuals with disabilities and families with children. Question 100. Which estate requires the presence of all four unities? A. Joint tenancy. B. Tenancy in common. C. Community property. D tenancy by the entirety. The correct answer is D. Tenancy by the entirety. Tenancy by the entirety is a form of ownership where spouses jointly hold the property with the four unities of possession, interest, time, and title. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe for more practice tests.